My sweet suffering, all my sorrow. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, or maybe good morning, depending on where you are in the world or when you're listening to this. You are very welcome to episode 31 of the Code Crown podcast, where we are going to be talking about episode 3 of Digimon Adventure 2020, an episode where only half the episode has something actually happen. Yet I've still wound up with three pages worth of notes. I really need to work on my spacing because this episode, only half of the episode actually has something happen. And that's because picking up from where episode two ended, um, Algamon was ready to wipe the kids off the face of the earth or wipe them out of the network. Um, but a miracle happened at the last moment, and Omegamon appeared to fight alongside Taichi and Yamato, who are now glowing as if they've gone Super Saiyan, or they've tapped into the power of their cosmos. Um, Koshiro uh, can't analyze Omegamon, he's wondering if it even is a Digimon. Omegamon is too fast for Algamon, um, he tries to end the battle, uh, but gets tied up and takes a blast to the face, this being Omegamon. Um, but I guess the Saiyan energy that's flowing through the kids uh, protects them from this point-blank blast that Omegamon just takes. I don't know. Um, like, Ome Algamon's throwing punches and stuff and can't, you know, he, uh, like, Omegamon's too fast for him. Omegamon attacks gets in real close but Algamon then goes ah, well I have you now thanks for coming to me and ties him up and then hits him with the blast to the face but it doesn't seem to phase the kids whatsoever um, the fight continues on and Algamon takes a point blank cannon to the back the Garuru cannon that is um, he survives this and then turns the network area they're fighting in into Bukura's Dark Sanctuary from that one episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! where him and Yami are, are dueling on the blimp with all the... Remember? With all the eyeballs. He basically turns it into that. Now, I know it's kind of like the baby Algamon in episode one. I know it's meant to be reminiscent of Diablomon and the area just being filled with clones. I get that but it's just eyes everywhere and it looks like Dark Sanctuary and it's very creepy, so kudos to that. Um, but <laughs> Omegamon just sort of shrugs it off. He dances through vines and lasers and ends the fight Diablomon style with the with the grey sword uh, put firmly through um, you know, put, put firmly through Algamon's chest not his face this time, but still, the implication is there. Connection terminated. Um, but the missile is still on trajectory. Uh, Koshiro pulls up like this funny Japanese message board where people are just like, well, I don't know, guess we're all dead. Oops, howdy do. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, and even one of the emojis is just like ASCII. It's just an ASCII of like this uh, emo emoji face just shrugging. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, that is the internet in 2020. I mean, have you seen 2020? Between the Australian fires, between the COVID stuff, between uh, certain other things. Um, yeah, the like 2020 is a crapshoot. And that message board in this episode sums it up quite well, let's be fair. Um, the Digivices glow and the crests of courage and friendship like flash up on screen and they're spinning around. And sort of the area around them turns into like a radar um screen i guess you just like there's this radar beneath omegamon and the digivices guide them to the missile data uh to show them where the missiles traject like because it has a black box that needs to be destroyed otherwise it's just going it's still going to strike tokyo omegamon destroys it and the missile goes into space and explodes better dropping it it better than dropping it into the sea i guess again it's it's that whole thing of i don't want to keep drawing comparisons to our war game but the show isn't really giving me much choice 
You know, it, it, it still comes down to, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just change it a little bit. Um, but the explosion causes an EMP, and this happens in the real world. Omegamon seals a black hole in the network that this EMP has caused. Uh, Ko Koshiro sees this in the real world? I don't know. And we're left just with the visual of Taichi reaching out to Agumon as everything goes dark around him. And Taichi finds himself back in the real world. Uh, technology is working again. We cut to Taichi's mom and Hikari. Uh, she seems to be looking up at the sky as well. Mom asks, is everything okay or is something wrong? And Hikari's just like, no, everything's okay. So the uh, the little uh, Hikari breadcrumbs where the seeds are still being planted for uh, whatever they've got in mind for how they're going to take this version of the character. Uh, Taichi is talking to his mom on the phone, making sure they're both okay, um, and then explains to uh, Koshiro how he got out of the network. Uh, Koshiro explains about the EMP and wonders if a mysterious power interfered, and then wonders about Omegamon. Well, maybe Omegamon was that mysterious power. He did just seem to come out of nowhere. We do see him sealing up the black hole, and, well, yeah... Um, and we then learned that everything that happened since Koshiro came o came over, it hasn't been an hasn't even been an hour in real time. Sorry, what? They've given no implication that the time that there's a time differential in this version of it. So since they left the house and ran to the station, and Taichi got summoned to the digital world. All the fights with the various forms of Algamon. Omegamon showing up. The EMPs. The blackouts. All of that stuff. It's all been within an hour. The stuff with the trains. It's all been within a single hour? Huh? Anyway. So they deduce that Yamato went back to where he's from. Not that they know. Because Taichi never asked where he's actually originally from. Because there was a line where they mentioned they're from Shibuya, and Yamato seems to go, huh, what, Shibuya, hmm. But we later learn the reason why, because it does seem Takeru is in Shibuya, so in this version, Yamato and Takeru's parents still seem to have split up, but they don't seem to be just, you know, six to ten blocks away from each other. They actually do seem to be living in different parts of the country. Which is a unique take on it, because, yeah, it's a bit more, lo well, not logical, but it makes more sense for the relationship to be maybe that bit strained, because they're living so far away from each other. Where the original show tried to imply that, but it also seemed like they could meet up whenever they wanted. There, was, there never seemed to be any weight uh, or... They never really brought up just how far away from each other they actually live. So, hmm. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, you delving into uh, that element of their relationship just that tiny bit deeper. Um, tai Chi thanks Koshiro for his support, and they have a like they have a really sweet moment where. Koshiro is like, oh, but I didn't do anything. And Taichi's like, no, you were awesome. You you supported us. You helped us out. You you told us where to go. You were able to look stuff up. You were like, you were you were just as essential in this fight as him as Taichi himself or even Yamato. And the two shake hands, and, and Taichi steps out of the elevator, and then go, then sort of realizes, oh wait, hold on, you came over to learn about the camp, right? And the two of them laugh, and the sweet moment is sort of this element of comedy then at the end, as the bond between these two it grows deeper, and it's really cute. Like, it's really nice to see. Some good characterization. I mean, the, the plot-wise and episode-wise, this show is running breakneck, as I've said before, but the characterization is really good. So I can't, I, I, I'm not going to hold that against it. Not yet, anyway. Um, so 
later on, um, Hikari and Mom come home. Tai is a great big brother. Like, he's like, were you scared? And he's, like, patting Hikari on the head. And, like, you were a, you were a brave girl today. And, you know, well done. And it's 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 just... Taichi's a good boy in this. He's very good. Um, Hikari tells him thank you. And sort of runs off. But he's very confused. So she obviously seems to know a lot more about what's going on than we do at the moment. So, I, again... Those little seeds that are being planted. How involved in all this is she? Uh, Yamato and Takaru were on the phone. Um, Yamato says, "Yeah, he'll he'll visit Tokyo next time." And and then that's kind of it. Like that's where if uh, what I said about the first two and a half episodes being this like mini movie or being this lead in movie, that's sort of where you cut it off because. The rest of the episode is very dry, I suppose, by comparison. We actually, we get to see Summer Camp, which is great. Um, there's a Joe cameo, and he's scolding the younger kids for not cutting the veggies correctly. And then later on, you can hear him in the background, Oh, I just cut my finger! So, you know, Joe is still Joe, and that's that's good so far. From, you know, from that little cameo, which is great. Um, tai Chi's grumping that the U.S. is claiming that they shot down their own errant missile, and that's why it, it, and that's why disaster was averted. But obviously, they know the truth about the matter. Um, the U.S. didn't do nothing; it was all them. Koshiro trips um, on a rock. Um, his computer goes flying out of his hands. Sora catches it, like. With like the best one-handed catch. She's just like, yeah, I got it. Um, Koshiro knows who she is because the girls in Koshiro's class think Sora's so cool. Uh, Taichi introduces the two of them and Sora goes back to her group. Uh, Koshiro asks if they're in the same class. Taichi says, yeah, but they go back so much further than that. Which is cool. Like, So they're building up um, you know, the, the childhood relationship um between the two already um because there was an element of there was a bit of a more random element amongst the kids in the original where some of them knew each other and some of them didn't you know but they all happened to be in <coughs> uh, pardon me they all all happened to be involved in the same circle of events so it's nice that they're sort of planting seeds um or putting some sort of time frame out there. Um so what else is there? Oh yeah, I like Sora's new outfit. I like her her uh tennis visor thing. Um cuz I think it goes better with her new outfit. She does get her helmet hat thing next episode and I'm going to touch on that then because I've been, I've mentioned before that I there's elements of the new designs that I don't like and this is one of them because it does genuinely feel like they were afraid to change the character designs too much in fear of scaring off the older audiences when you know this is supposed to be a new version of these set of characters and they should have just gone all out with the with the design changes to you know make for the newer generation. The OG designs were ours, so to speak, who started with the franchise 20 years ago, let the new generation have their own version of the characters with their own designs. And But we'll, we'll touch on that a bit um, as we go, because particularly Joe. Joe and Mimi are, I, I think, are the biggest offenders in terms of the new but old wardrobe stuff. But again, it's it's something we'll get to later. I don't want to hold things up too much here. Um, Koshiro theorizes that the Digimon are AI, and laments that nobody cares about the missile strike anymore. So it's even being brought up in universe um, that unless you're a main character, <laughs> you have the attention span of a gnat when it comes to um, otherworldly events and things like that. Um, and this is something that got brought up a lot, even in Try, where the world just seemed to have forgotten about Digimon. 
despite how big of an impact they had um, in universe over the first two seasons. So I like that they're kind of acknowledging it that like, yeah, people just, people are fickle. They just move on to the next thing that entertains them and they, you know, they forget about anything else. But tai, Won tai Chi wonders if maybe the missile strike was um, done by somebody who they got in, in the way of. Um, either way, it doesn't feel like it's over yet. The two seem to agree on that. And then just in that respect, we see that an, in the network, an egg drops and it hatches a new Digimon. Power outages spread across Tokyo and there's no known cause, though power companies are trying to resolve the matter. Um, strangely, though, Koshiro finds it, well, Koshiro finds it weird that all these power outages are happening, yet they still have internet connection. He simulates that Tokyo shutdown is going to happen in 72 hours. Uh, the digivices glow and Taichi runs off to meet Koshiro. So I suppose I, I should sort of uh, clarify that. This is like after the first, after their day at camp or the, their first day at camp, they seem to be at home. And then these power outages are happening. Koshiro goes back to the train station. He's talking with Taichi over the phone. Taichi runs off to meet Koshiro um, as the digivices start to glow. He runs into Hikari in the house, tells her to stay home safe with mom. He runs off and she says bye bye as if she knows he's going somewhere. Hmm, okay. And then we see the shadow of a feather fall behind Hikari. It's it's creepy. I love how I, I I love how just unsettling Hikari is right now because we don't know like if you know the original universe, you have an idea of what's coming. But they're going about it in a very just just drips and drabs and she comes off as quite creepy. And I kind of love that. So, again, very interested to see where Hikari's story goes in this and how they um, involve uh, Takar uh, Takeru and just... Yeah, no, I, I just... There's, I, there's, I think they're going to have a lot of fun with this because Hikari's magic powers just sort of got forgotten about in Season 2. They came up in one particularly creepy episode... And that was it. You never heard from them again. And then Try was... Well, Try was Try. It tried, I guess. And that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so Taichi runs out of the apartment block uh, toward the train station to meet Izzy. He runs past Sora, who's dragging around this big... He's this big old bag of groceries. And... She's following him, lugging this thing in tow. And then just as Taichi reaches Koshiro, he gets pulled into the network. And the Crest of Courage flashes up on screen. The Crest of Knowledge flashes up on screen. So Koshiro seems to have been pulled into this. And we see six lights uh, plummeting through the network. And initially I thought, okay, three humans and three Digimon. That's what the lights have to represent. Obviously... Uh, Taichi, Sora, and Koshiro, and then Agumon, T Tentamon, and uh, Piyomon. But no, I looked at the scene again, and the first three lights are green, blue, and sort of whitish gray, which obviously reference Mimi for green, Yamato for blue, and then the whitish gray is Joe. And then the next three lights you see are orange, purple, and red, Taichi, Koshiro, and Sora. So sort of symbolizing that all of them are pulled into the world at this stage and that makes more sense then as we get to uh, the next set of episodes. Taichi finds himself not in the network but in the digital world itself as he comes across Agumon who explains that this is the Digimon's home but to be honest it looks more like digital Jurassic Park. <laughs> um, there are just dinosaur Digimon everywhere and the episode ends. So, yeah, like it's, so this episode, the first half of it had all the action following up from episode two, and then 
the breathing room that I've said that the show really hasn't given the audience was the latter half of the episode. But it doesn't do anything with it. It throws a bunch of hypotheses out there. Maybe they're AI. Maybe they got in somebody's way. What is the deal with why Hikari is so creepy? You know, nothing's explained, but they do a bit of setup. And I guess that's better than nothing, right? You don't want everything... You don't want... You don't want a lore dump all at once, right? That was a problem with the Ultimate Clash in the original show, or Clash of the Megas, that episode, where that episode became a lore dump, and it was kind of too much all at once, because it explained how the kids were chosen, why they were chosen, how they were all related to events that happened prior to the show. There was so much all at once that do appreciate what the show is doing as the episodes move along where it's just dropping breadcrumbs and planting seeds and hopefully um, like we do get a lore dump two episodes from now but it's not overwhelming because there is it's not just an episode about a lore dump it's I don't want to spoil things for um, when we get to episode 5, but it is very much, here's the lore dump, oh wait, no, here's the bad guy, sorry, the lore dump is going to have to wait. Oh, excuse me. Um, So yeah, just these little drips and drabs are very appreciated and I'm very curious to see where they go with it. But I think that's really all I can say. My favourite character for the episode was Koshiro. Um, because I just think he's very sweet um, in this. And score-wise, it's a three, so we're still sort of middling. Um, You know, but I I think I've explained my reasons for why the first three episodes are very middling, because I'm, I'm, and it's, again, it's all personal preference. If you enjoy, if you think it's more than a three or you don't agree with my scores for the previous two episodes, that's fine. You're allowed to have a difference of opinion. That, but this, that's all this is. It's all just subjective. Um, but I'm too hung up on what they did with those first three episodes, um, rather than what the payoff for those first three episodes is and it might be something i go back and look at again once we have the full context of the series behind us maybe i'll think i was too harsh on these first three episodes or maybe i'll think yeah no i still feel the same way but ultimately that brings us to what do you think so Drop your comments down below. Let's get some conversation going. Do you agree with what I had to say? Do you have any theories of your own? Let them loose. Let them fly. Just be sure to, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, just be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Get the bell on so you know when future podcast episodes go live. And if you want to support the channel, there is a tip jar and a PayPal link in the description below. Or if you're watching live on Premiere, maybe consider super chatting. No obligation, totally up to yourself, but it all does go toward helping the channel and would be appreciated. So, until then, this is Adam just saying, look after yourselves, do take care, wash your hands, wear a mask, look out for yourself and your fellow humans. Sweet dreams, take care, whatever you're getting up to, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye-bye.